This podcast is a proud member of the Unidentified Network. So now, ladies and gentlemen, live and in color, it's Mr. Wayne Love Juice. The other day I produced a movie Had a cat with an interesting trappy We said that the YouTube algorithm Really aren't that happy If a channel only broadcasts once a week So we decided we could text ya Whenever we've got a piece of news In our new book on the track extra Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name's John Dans. I'm the director of the Centre for Fortune Zoology, and welcome to another issue of On the Track Extra. For, and this week, my co-pilot, the gentleman in the co-life pilot seat, is none other than my old friend of V McQuinnan. Hello, V. Good evening. What are we talking about today, V? A mishmash, a miscellany, uh, a, a mutated something or other of all sorts of weirdness, I would imagine. Of no, hard no. science, weird shit and surreality. Yes, that was a very, very good encapsulation of what this show is all about. So V, what is surreality? The reality is a realism-based mode of art, which can cross many genres, uh, where the where there's an inbuilt juxtaposition between absurdity and reality. In other, in other words, when we talk about surreality on this show, it's you and me, and quite often Richard Freeman twatting about. Yes. Well, I think that's probably the technical term for it. For those of you who don't know, the Wednesday show that you're watching now is an adjunct to our Saturday afternoon show at 3 o'clock, which lasts for half an hour and sometimes longer, and covers the aforementioned subjects. And this show, it is a show which comes out every Wednesday evening at 6.30 lasts about half as long as the Saturday show and also covers such subjects as cryptozoology, fortune zoology, mystery animals and a load of allied disciplines. Yes. So what's in this show? Hang on, hold on to your seats, you're just about to find out. But it's actually not quite as simple as that. Let me give you an update. Update time. It's update time. What is it, Mr. McCrennan? It's update time. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, you may have gathered. It's update time. Everything's changing here at CFZ TV. Well, not everything. I mean, On The Track will still be going out on Saturdays and On The Track Extra will still be going out on Wednesdays. Although there is some discussion that we might change our broadcast times, but not yet anyway. But now these two shows are going to be joined by a new show. And we're very excited to be able to tell you that we will soon be broadcasting on Sunday evenings a show called Don't Whistle in the Woods. And here's Dave Scott from CSA Canada to tell you all about it. So, David, tell me, what's all this about you having a show of your own? Well, it's not, it's not going to be a show of my own. What I'm going to do is I'm going to produce the first 12 episodes for us with uh, our host, Ashley. But after that, uh, we're dealing strictly with uh, not strict 
we're dealing more with Canadian uh, folklore myths, the woo. You know, the stuff I don't really like. <laughs> but we're, we're, we needed a place to put it. And we do have people that, you know, follow it. And we need to uh, keep them informed and abreast of what's going on in the world, too. So um, I'm actually doing the first week because Ashley is sicker than I am. So I'm actually, when we're done here, I'm going to record the first show myself. The second show is already done, as is the third. We're just out of order. But uh, the premiere episode is not being done. It will come out. We will be ready for Monday. I absolutely guarantee it. It's a little bit of a struggle being away from home, and I don't have all my equipment. Um, but uh, I'm going to try and... Uh, have as much of it done the only thing is i'm going to need uh a soundtrack put in so if we could just use some of your music or our max music oh there's my phone telling me it's slow so we're, we're going to be quick uh everything's a battle nowadays isn't it um tell me about it yeah but uh i'm, I'm actually staying a little bit longer because uh i'm on chat slake i'm in our prayer which is, the, you know, the Chats Ch Lake uh, Sea Monster. I'm on the Ottawa and the Madawaska River. It's right in the border. So I am going to go and do some uh, photography work down there. I'm actually going to go out to Fitzroy uh, next week when my when Rhonda gets back with the, my, my vehicle and actually look around the harbor, which is where the new uh, one, uh, where I'm doing it on the track episode for you, on a 17-foot no, a 12-foot American eel sighted there in 2017, which is a new one, but it's just off the, like, it's all part of Chad Slate, that area. Um, so that's where the big one was caught in 1882. So, but the show is going to deal more with uh, paranormal, just the little weird things in life that, you, you know, you kind of go, What's all this about? And uh, can you see that coming up on my screen? I can see, yeah. Oh, hang on, man. Let me keep playing. That's just my pills already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, uh, the second show is on the Haunted Tunnels of Thurled. Uh, the third one is uh, actually Robin Moonshadow. She's going to do some ghost stories. And the fourth ones, which I'll probably get done this, the fourth episode, which I'll probably also get done this week, is uh, uh, my own ghost experiences, uh, which I really don't, I don't often talk about them because it's not my favorite subject. But uh, uh, I'm willing to take a hit for the team, you know that. So. Um, I have an interview with Derek later tonight, which is the eel. So I'm actually been pretty busy. I actually got so sick last Friday. I was asleep for three days. So I came down here to help my brother and my my nephew, and my nephew wound up having to take care of both of us for two days. So <laughs> What's the show called? I Don't Whistle in the Woods. It's on the native legend of why you don't whistle in the woods. And uh, you'll have to watch the first episode to find out why don't. And there's also some coverage on uh, whistling at the Northern Lights that I found that I thought was very interesting that I'm going to, uh, that we've incorporated into the first script too. So it's, it's going to be fun. And you are having us um, stream it and disseminate it here on CFZ TV. Yes, it's, it's actually, it's introduced as part of the CFZ TV network. That's it's, it's going fantastic. To be, it just makes our channel a little bit. Uh, instead of having two channels, especially a small one like uh, Don't Whistle in the Woods, we'll be at the start um, struggling to get things done. This way I can, we could just, we could complement each other, cover stuff that, you know, if you get something over in Britain and, or Richard does or anybody over there gets something and it's kind of like, well, it doesn't really fit cryptozoology or what we actually do and we don't really want to step that far off because I know we'll step off but 
Um, we don't want to step that far off, but it should be covered. We've got Don't Whistle in the Woods to cover it on. That's You're absolutely gonna... fantastic, Dave. But that's not all. We've got more news for you. The latest issue of the magazine of the Centre for Fortune Zoology, issue 75 of Animals and Men, which has been going reasonably consistently since 1994, is now available for sale on Amazon. And for the first time in many, many years, it's almost a single subject issue. Of course, it's not the stuff about mystery cats and mystery BHM sightings and all sorts of other things. But the two main articles in the main body of the magazine are both about dragons. And this is not only because Richard Freeman is, as I'm sure everybody knows, a total dragon freak, but it is because of what happened on the 27th of December last year, only about six weeks ago, when our friend Darren Graham was leading a group of ghost watchers for a vigil in the grounds of Waverley Abbey in Surrey, when a bunch of them, not quite all of them, but a whole bunch of the people who were there saw what they identified as a dragon. And if you read the article that I wrote about the affair, it's a long and rambling article because it's a long and rambling subject. It shows quite how many dragon references there are, not just in that particular area, but in the very ether around it. There were dragon sightings quite regularly up until the middle of the 18th century. But the dragon names in the local folklore and in the local geography, the local pub is called Bell and the Dragon. And if any of you can work out why, Bell and the Dragon is an obscure book in the biblical apocrypha and why a whole string of pubs in southern England are named after it, I have absolutely no idea. But they are, and it is very peculiar, I think, that in the place where a bell and the dragon is the local pub, a dragon suddenly appears. We've got interviews with several of the witnesses, and we've got accounts of other geographical anomalies. For example, the World War II fortifications around the Abbey in order to keep tanks away. Uh, Dr. O'Day keeps the tank away, are called Dragon's Teeth. And the local sculpture park is full of statues of, guess what, dragons. And so the whole thing is really quite extraordinary. So, I wrote an enormous article about it, and Richard wrote a fascinating piece about other sightings of modern dragons. And when you put that together with all the other news, reviews, letters, and everything else, I think it's one of our better issues. So, go to Amazon. It's only a few quid, and you can buy a copy of Animals and Men, issue 75. And if you want to wait, wait until issue 76 is out in Amazon, which will be in June, and you will be able to read issue 75 for free as a flip book up on the main CFZ website. And at the moment, you can read issue 74, which has just gone up on the main CFZ website. Because the CFZ is not about making money. It's about spreading information and gathering information and then making it available to anybody who wants it. And that's about it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and found it at least mildly edifying. I want to say a big thank you to my two guests this time who were Vim Quinn and Dave Scott. And I want to say thank you to my producer, Louis, 
but for whom we wouldn't be able to do this show, and some more but for whom people. My Deputy Director of the CFZ and also my carer, Graham Inglis, without whom I would not be able to live in this house and I'd probably end up in some horrible, soul-destroying, assisted living facility which would probably kill me in a few months because I can't imagine anything worse. And I want to say thank you to Gwyn Palmer, the Assistant Director of the Centre for Fortune Zoology for all the things that she does which nobody understands and nobody knows about but she just goes ahead and does them. Thank you baby, it's very, very sweet of you and you do not know, you have no inkling how grateful I am. I'm going to be back on Saturday. What are we talking about on Saturday? Well, he seems to have disappeared. But I think... Are you there, Mr. McCrimmon? No, Mr. McCrimmon doesn't seem to be there. So, I assume that... Are you going to be watching it, Mr. McCrimmon? Because if he is watching it, I believe it is a part of an interview with the irrepressible Ronan Coglan about that most mysterious of Irish aquatic cryptids, the Dovahu. And so, Mr. McCrimmon, if you're there watching it, I'm going to be there doing all the stuff I do, the notifications and the, what's it called, the uh, 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 live, live chat and everything else. And I'll be seeing you.